Hi, I'm Robbie from RBC, and in today's how-to video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the Olin's RXF air cartridge. For the purpose of this demonstration, we are going to use uh, my RXF 36 fork, which is 160 mils of travel. It comes with an identical um, air cartridge like this. You've got a ramp up chamber here, you've got your negative chamber here, and you've got your positive chamber. Incidentally, uh, the negative chamber comes with a, a separate air token, so you can actually tune it. The positive chamber, uh, this one is uh, at 170 uh, millimeters of travel, but you can actually change the travel by uh, changing uh, your uh, positive chamber um, from one, well, actually from 90 mils all the way through to 170 in one centimeter increments. So to get down to the setup, um, what you need to do to start out with is actually let all the air out of your positive chamber first, um, and then go down to the bottom end of the fork, pump up your ramp up chamber to the factory setting on the back of your fork, then pump up the ramp up, uh, the positive chamber to the factory setting on the bottom of your fork. What the, what the ramp up chamber does, and, and uh, people get a little bit confused about what this is and how it affects it, because other brands have this as a, uh, an access to the negative chamber, but this is actually a separate air chamber completely, and it acts like an air token. So with, with your normal plastic air tokens that you have that other manufacturers make, you don't have the same control over your travel. So what happens if you put, uh, and I often see it, we get guys with like five air tokens in some of the forks. But once you start adding tokens and you keep that same air pressure, your progression on the air is actually going to eliminate a, a percentage of your travel. So for instance, if you had a 120 mil fork and you put five air tokens in it, uh, but it actually eliminated down to about 115 or 110 mils of travel, because your weight will only pressurize that air, will only compress that air a certain amount. And if, if you make the air chamber smaller, it's actually going to affect the travel. So the ramp up chamber actually does, works completely separately because it's also uh, air controlled, air is compressible. So rather than giving you a dead kind of setup, this was, is more dynamic. So it will continue through the curve, will allow you a full travel, but it will change the progression at the bottom end of the travel. So what I'm going to demonstrate in this is that you can actually, with the Olin's fork, you can actually set your, uh, your sag a little bit more, like if you're wanting more small, a small bump compliance or a much uh, more compliant fork, but you don't want to bottom it out, you can actually run a little bit less air, like say 35%, or even if you've got a shorter travel, you can go to 30%. Um, as long as your ramp up chamber is at the correct setting, um, you actually can then get away with having less air in the positive uh, without bottoming out the fork or giving or losing travel if you want to keep the, the fork set at the correct pressure for your body weight. So for my weight and settings, this I recommended, well, the factory recommendation for me is 160 PSI on the uh, ramp up chamber and 80 PSI on the positive side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that. I'm going to run a test on the, on the spring dyno, and we'll look at this uh, progression curve. Then I'm going to pump this up to 200 PSI, the ramp up chamber, and we'll have a look at the progression curve then. Then I'm going to uh, ramp it up to 240, and we'll have a look at the progression curve then. So for today's test, we're going to use the Andriani DS1. It's the air spring dyno. It will do uh, three things, actually. It will show me um, the uh, damper. Uh, the first initial uh, stiction on the damper, then it will show me uh, the air spring curve, and finally it will show me the last bit of the bottom out, which is the rubber bumper at the end, will we'll add it into that. So that complete uh, cycle is the full spring curve of, uh, of a fork or a rear shock, especially with the air side, because the air side has a very different feel to uh, the coil spring. Um, so Understanding that with this, uh, the DS1, it makes it much easier to understand and visualize as well.
So at, at the first one with my factory setting, you can see the, the graph is quite nice. Um, there's a nice bit of progression towards the end. Um, that's the blue line. The green line is the next one. You can see that um, it actually uh, keeps a nice and firm. And then there's a nice progression at the end. And the red one obviously at uh, 240 PSI has the most progression. But what I'd like you to notice is that the travel all remains the same. So there isn't a change in the travel. If I had a plastic air token in here, we would actually see the, this little red line ending up around about there somewhere. Uh, because the air, um, the air is then not more uh, compressible at the, uh, at the pressure that I'm using for my weight. If you like the video, please click like um, and join us uh, with the subscribe button and then click on the bell if you want notifications for further videos. If you'd like any further information, please PM me and uh, we can talk about uh, the air chamber because there's a lot of stuff that I haven't even covered today.